Assalamu alaikum doctors. In this video, I am discussing a communication history that is a colleague related, that is a needle prick injury of a colleague. So first, IRCAP as usual, then tell me how can I help you? Uh, that uh, I want to know the chance of having hepatitis C, B and HIV. So hepatitis V virus is 30%, hepatitis C is 3% and HIV is 0.3%. Again, hepatitis V virus is 30%, hepatitis C virus is 3% and HIV is 0.3%. Okay, doctor, what could I do? How can I take the post-exposure prophylaxis? Actually, I hope you washed your hands with running water and soap because it is the first thing you should do for post-exposure prophylaxis. So first you will be wash the hand with the running water and the soap. Then I did. This is very good. Also, we have to trace the source of the needle. That is the problem. We could not trace it. I am asking everyone and no one knows the needle came from. It is okay. We can talk about the post-exposure prophylaxis. So for hepatitis B, it is according to your vaccination status. If you are vaccinated, it is according to the title of HBS, AB, hepatitis B antibody. Uh, if it is more than 10 milli international unit per ml, no ex post-exposure prophylaxis is needed. But if it is less than 10, we need to take a booster dose of hepatitis B vaccines. But if you are not vaccinated, you need to take the vaccine and hepatitis B immunoglobulin within 72 hours of exposure. So again, about the hepatitis B. Hepatitis B, it is okay. We can talk about the post-exposure prophylaxis. So about uh, hepatitis B, it is according to your vaccination status. If you are vaccinated, it is according to your hepatitis B antibody um, titer. If it is more than 10 milli international unit per ml, no post-exposure prophylaxis is needed. But if it is less than 10, we need to take a booster dose of hepatitis B vaccine. If you, but if you are not vaccinated, you need to do the vaccine and hepatitis B immunoglobulin within 72 hours of exposure. Okay. Regarding the hepatitis C, unfortunately, there is no any post-exposure prophylaxis, but we can discuss it with the infectious disease doctor and hepatology doctor and we can do PCR to know whether you got it or not. And luckily, there is a treatment for that. So regarding hepatitis C, unfortunately, there is no any prophylaxis post-exposure, but we can discuss with the infectious disease doctor and the hepatology doctor and we can do PCR to know whether you go it or not. And luckily, there is a treatment for that. Okay, so what about HIV? As you know, the chance of having HIV from a needle prick injury is 0.3%. Are you with me? Okay. So if only we are working in high risk areas, we will discuss it with the infectious disease doctor. They may give you two or three antiretroviral medications or four weeks or 28 days. Am I clear? So hepatitis HIV is 0.3%. So if only we are working in the high risk areas, we will discuss it with the infectious disease doctor. They may give you a two or three antiretroviral medications for four weeks or 28 days. Am I clear? Okay. Antigenous is also one of the post-exposure prophylaxis measures according to your immunization status. If you are immunized and the last booster dose within the first uh, the five years, you will not take any. But if it is more than five years, you will take a booster dose. So regarding tetanus, any tetanus and tetanus is also one of the post-exposure prophylaxis measures according to your immunization status. If you are immunized and the last booster dose within the five years, you will not take anything, but if it is more than five years, you will take a booster dose. But if I am not immunized, you will take both of them, the vaccine and TIG, tetanus immunoglobulin. Am I clear so far? Okay, doctor. Then the last, what we do? Then you have to fill the proper incident form. You have to document everything. For example, you have to mention the details of the incident, the time, the date, and the place, where exact in your body and wh whatever it is exposed superficially or drip whether you know the source or not also what kind of needle or syringe whether you have provided first aid or not whether it is contaminated or not and your immunization status all this you have to document again at the last needle prick injury what we do then you have to fill the proper incident form you have to document everything for example you have to mention the details of the incident the time date and the place where exact in your body and whatever it is exposed superficially or deep, whether you know the source or not, also what kind of needle or syringe, whatever, whether you have provided first aid or not, whether it is contaminated or not, and your immunization status, all this you have to document. So this is all about needle prick injury communication. Thank you.